Before this video starts, you should have a base level understanding of C++ to use easy template properly. If you don't know where to start learning programming from the ground up, I'm releasing a course that will take you from no experience to a competitive robotics programmer. Link in the description. The first thing you want to do when starting with easy template is to just Google easy template Vex or just like Vex Robotics easy template. And the first page that should come up is a GitHub pages page that says easy template. This is the official easy templates page. Scroll down, download installation, and you click here to install the zip. Then you're going to want to go to where the zip installed, right click and do extract files and click OK. I already have mine extracted, so I'm not going to re-extract it. You're also going to want to install VS Code. So you're just going to download for whatever platform you're on and install it. Now you can either Google uh, Pro's VS Code and click the first link, or you can go into Visual Studio Code, go to extensions and search Pro's, and it should come up here and you'll just click install. Now, when you download the extension, Pro's should automatically install, but if it didn't, you can go to manage Pro's and click install Pro's and it should pop up here. I have mine installed and it says everything is currently working and up to date. Okay, you should open the extracted folder with your easy template example project and you can go ahead and click main.cpp. In here, you'll see your chassis, which has all of your ports, your inner sensor port, your wheel diameter, and your wheel RPM. I'm running 450 on 3.25 inch wheels. My MU port is 21. And here you can configure your chassis. So you just do all of your chassis ports one by one. This is left, this is right. And by adding a negative port that reverses the motor. Down here, right below chassis, you should see your tracking wheels. And you can go ahead and uncomment any tracking wheel that you wanna use. So this will be your port, this will be your wheel diameter, and this will be your offset from the tracking center. We'll go over that later. I'm not using any tracking wheels, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave these commented, but you can uncomment them if you're using tracking wheels. Then down here, if you're using the tracking wheels, then you can uncomment vertical tracker. If you're using a vertical tracking wheel, come down here and the one that says vertical tracking wheel, you can uncomment that. And now that sets up your vertical tracking wheel. Here is just your joystick curves and your acto brake. You can leave these blank for now. You don't really need to do anything with these. This initializes all of your autons. Uh, we'll cover this later, but this just defines all of your autons with the description. This is what you'll see on the screen, so you know which auton you're actually selecting. Don't remove this part. This just initializes your chassis and it initializes the selector. It also lets you know if your IMU is calibrated or not. Uh, if it didn't calibrate properly, then you'll get uh, three long buzzes. In autonomous, it resets all of your sensors. So if you moved the robot before autonomous, it's fine. It'll reset automatically. This also sets your motor to hold. So your autonomous is more accurate. Then it calls the selected autonomous program. These just automatically print out all of your odometry and PID values. And this runs, this runs in the background. This runs the odometry printing stuff in the background so it doesn't hog up your program resources it'll just run in the background this is where your driver control code is well this is actually where it is but this runs in the driver control loop so during this loop is every piece of code that will run during your driver control uh, this sets your motors to coast obviously when you're driving you probably want your motors on coast if you set this to brake, your drive chain will probably overheat very fast or you'll uh, screw up your motors Okay, now we're in autons.cpp. Here we have our drive speed, our turn speed, and our swing speed. So you can modify this to be 127 if you want full speed, or you can do 110 if you want like 80% speed. Um, yeah. This function default constants is pretty important. This sets all of your constants for your PID values. So you're gonna wanna go in here and tune these according to the PDF I have in the description, or you can tune them based off of the easy template tutorial on their website. It'll give you a tutorial on how to tune each PID value. This is your exit conditions. So this tells the PID when it should stop running. 
So for example, your turn exit condition will be if it's within three degrees. Um, so your small error is three degrees and your large error is seven degrees. So if it's almost out of time for the movement and is within seven degrees, it'll stop. Or if it's within three degrees, uh, it'll stop. These are just your example autos. So this is drive example, turn example, drive and turn example, and wait until it change speed. So these are just example autos. But if you wanted to create a new auto, you would come down here and be like void roll rush red and you would make the auto then you go to autos.hvp define this goal rush red and you're just defining oh my god okay yeah you're just defining your functions here so boom then you go back into main scroll up Create a description. It's important that that you define the function here. So, just adding a function in autons.cpp, the C++ file, adding just a function in here, but not in here, will make you error in in uh, main. So, if I go in here and I delete this line, right? Main now doesn't know this exists. Main will be like, what are you referring to? This doesn't exist. So you need to redeclare your function in here with a semicolon. This isn't, this doesn't actually contain the function. You'll see it just popped up with an error. It's kind of delayed, but just adding in here will not be enough. You need to declare it in here. And now main knows this exists and now it'll run it. This will be in your selector and this will be the description for it. So that's how you add a custom auto. So you can come in here and define your an intake motor. If you have an intake, do this. This is the motor port. Or you can go in here and define a motor group. So you can do pros motor group intake motors. And you can do one, two. And this will create a motor group with one and two as the ports. And you can also make these positive or negative. Uh, to reverse them in your autonomous program, you can go to autos.cpp and you can do intake motors dot move and this will move ports one and two together. So that's how you that's how you define a motor. You can come down here. I forgot to mention this before, but you can switch this to your preference for driving. So I like doing arcade standard split. Some people like doing tank drive. That's the simplest one to do. Some, some people like doing a flipped or like doing a single stick. Those people are weird, but you can come down here and do if master dot, and master is the controller here. That's kind of ambiguous, but master means controller. Um, it's called master because sometimes people have more than one controller hooked up to the robot. So you can do get, get digital, and then do, yeah. Okay, so you can do digital and then underscore and then whatever you want. So digital, let's say L1 will be digital L1 is intake motors dot move 127, which is max speed. And then you can do, what the fuck? And then you can do else if master dot get digital, digital L2. And then you can do intake motors dot move dot move negative one two seven and that'll spin it in the opposite direction and you need to add one last condition which is else and then do intake motors dot move zero the else is basically if you click one of these and then stop clicking it the else will run and it will prevent them from moving um i've been confused about this in the past and only added these two and as soon as i click one of them it either does full power forward or does full power backward. And I was confused on why it didn't work. You need to add the else at the end. And then as far as pistons goes, okay, so in subsystems, I've decided I've, I've declared a piston, easy template piston, uh, piston on 
through our port A, and you go into main.cpp and do piston dot button toggle master dot get digital and then you do digital down or do whatever digital port you want uh, and now whenever you click this whenever you do that it'll toggle it from on to off so if you click down once it'll shoot out and then you click down again it'll retract Okay, so we're quickly going to go over how to do custom PIDs. So let's say you have a Lady Brown or a Lyft and you want to do a PID um, to control the lift accurately to do a certain angle or something like that. You would basically just do pros, motor group, Lady Brown, and then you would do the two ports in that list, and then you would go to main or actually go back to subsystems and then you would do easy PID and then you do lady brown lady brown PID and then you would do this so you would do example values Okay, so this is the name of the mechanism. This is used for debugging information. Uh, if you log out your computer, it'll say the Lady Brown PID. Uh, this is your PID, and it's your starting I value. Um, so you'll basically just tune this to get accurate values. Um, and then in the initialize, you'll want to go to initialize function. You'll do Lady Brown dot tear position. That's important for the PID down here in driver control when you're actually using it. We'll do uh, some simple driver control functions. So we'll do if master bracket digital, and then you'll do digital, whatever you want to do, brown PID dot target set. Then you'll do whatever you want. Let's do 90 degrees. And then you'll do else if master dot debt digital digital l2 lady round dot target set zero okay so basically this is saying if you click the left button it'll set the target pid value to 90 and if you click l2 it'll set it to zero and then this is basically telling it to move to what the pid wants it to move to so this compute with the pid thing is just computing the amount of power necessary. So this is the actual output of the PID loop that's being piped into the move function. So this is basically saying, as the PID is calculating um, how much power you need, uh, it'll move it based off of the PID. So this is basically just saying, move it based off of the PID loop. And then obviously this is in a loop, so the PID will keep running until this says it doesn't need to move anymore then it'll stop moving. So we're first going to go over some basic drivetrain movements. So chassis.pid turn set, and you can do 90 degrees, and then do 90 degrees, and then you'll do turn speed, boom. And you'll do chassis.pid weight. And basically, this tells the chassis to turn to 90 degrees, and it tells it to wait until the PID is done. You can also do wait quick, or you could do wait quick chain, which chains the movements together. Then you'll do chassis.pid drive set, which you can do 12 inches, do 12 inches, and then do drive speed. That's what tells it, tell it to drive for 12 inches. And you could do PID wait. Basically, what this will do is turn the robot 90 degrees and then drive 12 inches. Basically, the basic, most basic form of movement you could have uh, on a robot, and this is how you do it. This is just linear, simple movement. There's also swing movements, which is chassis dot PID swing set. And then you can do easy left swing, then you do 45 degrees, and 90 speed. So 
This basically will swing the left side of the drag train. It will only drive one side of the drag train while the other side doesn't move at all. So it'll kind of swing the drive around. Okay, now we get into the fun stuff, the odometry movement. So first thing you need to know for the odometry movement, get rid of all this. First thing you need to know for the geometry movement is turn to a point. So you can do chassis dot PID turn set, and then you can do zero inches by 24 inches and forward 90. Basically what this does is it turns the robot um, to X zero Y 24, which is just straight ahead. Uh, if you were to do 24, 24, the robot, if it was right here, it would turn something like over here. Uh, if you were to do negative, it would turn like that. And if you were to do both of the negative, it would turn something like this. Uh, basic coordinate plane stuff that you learn in math, not, not too hard. Um, yeah. So that's basically just turning to a point. And then moving to a point, you would do chassis dot, dot PID autom set. And then you would do your coordinates here. So you could do uh, 12 by 12 and then do forward at drive speed. Essentially what this will do is if it'll drive it to 1212. 12. So on a coordinate plane, if your robot's right here, it'll drive it to somewhere right here because that's 12 up and then 12 to the side. So it'll drive it like that. Uh, that's how you move to a specific point. Uh, and then there's also moving to a pose. So, oh. so the difference between moving to a point and moving to a pose is this includes the end angle. So this uh, doesn't matter what angle it ends at. This specifically ends in a certain angle. So it'll end at 12, 12 at 45 degrees rotation, which is super useful, obviously, when you're making autonomous programs. There are a number of different constants that you have to tune for PID, uh, exit conditions, slew constants, IMU scaling, wheel diameter, whatever. There's a bunch of input stuff that you have to tell Easy Template for it to be accurate and for it to work properly. Uh, I'm not going to cover this in this short video, but I highly encourage you to check out the links that I have below, the resources, and the Easy Template official documentation because they do a better job of explaining it than I do, uh, that I could do in a 20 minute video. So definitely go check this out.